lobby, John Brown. You had my time. Oh, yeah. But now I'm still alive. Oh, Woo! Yeah. You had my time. In a previous video, we modeled a rocket as a point mass. In this lesson, we'll model a rocket as a 2D rigid body and we'll steer the rocket by directing the rocket thrust. The model is based on a Delta IV rocket shown in the picture minus the booster rockets shown in that configuration. I obtained the data for the rocket from the internet but it was incomplete for our purposes so I had to guess, let's say estimate, some values as indicated on the screen. Every rocket used for space launches uses two stages, a massive first stage to get the rocket off the ground and well out of the Earth's atmosphere, and a smaller second stage to propel the payload into space. Reviewing the data for the simplest configuration for the Delta IV, we have the first stage data, and that's for the complete rocket when it lifts off. The mass is 250,000 kilograms. The fuel is 150,000 of those kilograms, and that's fuel that's expended during the first stage. The total length of the rocket is 70 meters. The thrust of the first stage is 3,212 kilo newtons, and the burn time is 260 seconds. For the second stage, the mass is 50,000 kilograms, and that's a guess. Fuel is 25,000 kilograms, that too is a guess, and the length is 45 meters. These are all guesses. The thrust is 110 kilonewtons, that's accurate and the burn time is 150 seconds. That's also accurate. Here is how we will model the first stage. The state variables are the rocket's position, x and y, and their rates of change, and the rocket's orientation angle, alpha, and its rate of change. The relevant data is the rocket's first stage thrust, T1, the initial mass of the entire rocket, M1, the mass of the fuel expended in the first stage, F1, the burn time, B1, and the total length of the rocket, L1. The magnitude of the thrust during the first stage is a constant, T1, and we will control the direction of the thrust. Thrust is directed theta degrees off the rocket's center line as shown in the diagram. Theta is our thrust direction control variable, and we will program it directly. The thrust direction in the simulation frame is alpha plus theta. Since the fuel weight is a significant part of the rocket's total weight, we will model the decrease in the rocket's mass as it burns. At time t, the fraction of the fuel that has been burned is t divided by b1, the stage 1 burn time, and the mass at time t is calculated as the initial mass m1 minus t over b1 the amount of fuel for stage one. We also need the rocket's moment of inertia to determine how the torque created by the thrust turns the rocket. The rocket's moment of inertia is calculated using the formula for the moment of inertia of a cylinder, and that is I equals 1 12 times M at time T times the length L1 squared. We don't steer the rocket during the second stage, so the second stage thrust is directed along the rocket's center line, and hence its direction angle is alpha. We do model the decreasing mass of the second stage as the fuel burns. The time into the second stage is given by T minus B1, the burn time of the first stage, and also the flight time of the first stage in our simulation, so that the fraction of the fuel expended is T minus B1 divided by B2, the burn time of the second stage. So, the mass of the second stage at time t is given by m2, the mass at the start of stage 2, minus t minus b1 over b2, times f2, the amount of fuel for stage 2. We refer to the flight of the rocket after the second stage is burned out as the third, or flyout stage. During the flyout stage, the rocket is in free fall.
Our goal is to launch a payload into orbit around the Earth. And since we're in two dimensions, to keep it simple, we will launch the rocket from a point on the equator. So looking at the graph, we will launch the rocket from coordinates x equals r Earth, y equals zero, that is the three o'clock position on the surface of the Earth. Now the Earth spins, and in Earth-centered inertial coordinates, the launch point and the rocket have a velocity in the y direction equal to the radius of the Earth times the rotation rate of the Earth in radians per second, and this velocity has a significant effect on the rocket's trajectory, so we must include it in the model. Thus, the initial velocity of the rocket is x velocity equals zero and y velocity equals the radius of the Earth times the Earth's rotation rate. Do we need to model atmospheric drag? We don't, but suppose we want to verify that. There's a little problem. As we have seen, the rocket inherits a velocity in the y direction at launch. But the atmosphere is moving at the same velocity, so there is no drag resulting. We will assume that the atmosphere rotates with the Earth, and to calculate drag, we'll need to compute the rocket's velocity relative to the atmosphere. We'll do this by subtracting the atmosphere's velocity from the rocket's velocity. First, we need a model for the atmosphere. The atmospheric density decreases from 1.4 kilograms per cubic meter at sea level to about zero at an altitude of 30,000 meters, so we can model it with a linear function as shown for air density. Now we need to calculate the air's velocity at the rocket's location, which we suppose is at r comma theta in polar coordinates. The Earth's velocity at r theta is r times the Earth's rotation rate, and its direction is theta plus pi over 2. So resolving it into x and y components, we have the x component is r times Earth rate times cosine theta plus pi over 2, and the y component is r times Earth rate times sine of theta plus pi over 2. Now we can compute the rocket's velocity minus the air's velocity and compute the drag on the rocket using the usual formula f drag equals c drag times d times v squared times cs divided by 2. So we launch the rocket without steering. The rocket goes up, the rocket comes down. If we want to get the rocket to go into orbit around the Earth, we're going to have to steer it. We only steer the rocket in phase one, and phase one lasts 260 seconds. DT is one, so we will need an array of 260 elements to specify theta. I can't really remember the process that got me to these values, but suffice it to say, they do the trick. And we get the desired result. The rocket's now in orbit around the Earth. The assignment is the usual, program the sim, and reproduce the graphs in the video.
John Brown.